Good evening, you're watching Mirror Now. I'm Sanjana and we're bringing you the latest on coronavirus as part of our continuing coverage. But before I go right into it, let me stress to our viewers once again that it is important to stay healthy. It is important at this point of time to stay home. And as you can see, Mirror Now anchors are bringing you the news from our homes. I'm currently at home right now and I appeal to all of our viewers to please do the same. So please take all the measures, wash your hands, but most importantly, stay at home and don't panic and actually use this time to do something else and you know build a schedule around it. So let's quickly take you through the latest updates that are coming in with regards to the coronavirus. Now all eyes will be on the Prime Minister's address to the nation which will be at 8 p.m. this evening. The Prime Minister is expected to address the nation and brief the media about the vital aspects surrounding coronavirus. All eyes will definitely be on that. We also heard the Finance Minister earlier in the afternoon uh, talk about the extension of uh, the deadlines when it comes to G GST when it comes to filing tax returns so there was some relief for uh, you know for a lot of taxpayers there as well there's also been an extension of the Aadhaar linking to PAN deadline as well meanwhile we've also seen a rise in the cases the positive cases now we're seeing 492 cases that have been reported uh, across India uh, but we also know that the center, the government and all the state governments are working really hard to battle and fight the coronavirus. We heard a briefing from the health ministry just moments ago talking about how they've stepped up uh, and roped in private labs uh, to you know, increase testing and more importantly appeal to states to take this lockdown very seriously because that's the need of the hour. Now, in the midst of all of this, it is understandable that amidst the lockdown in several states of India, uh, since people are allowed only to step out of their homes to buy essentials, that the supply and the availability of milk, of vegetables, of eggs, uh, you know, is extremely crucial. But however, what we're noticing uh, in cities like Mumbai, in cities like Bengaluru, the price of vegetables has shot up. So the price of tomatoes, the price of potatoes, the price of cabbage, uh, the price of bhindi, that's ladies' flower, uh, ladies' finger, I'm sorry, all of that has shot up. We're seeing at least a 20 to 30 rupee hike. This is after people have also indulged in panic buying. Another angle that we actually brought to you last week. Let me quickly go across to my colleague Neha Hebale now, who is joining me live from Bengaluru as we speak. Uh, she's joining me from Gandhi Bazaar in Bengaluru. Neha, tomorrow is also Ugadi. Uh, this is... Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, a time that is extremely festive, uh, especially in Karnataka. But are you seeing a lot of activity on ground? Well, Sanjana, you know, it's more of an emotional uh, festival. It's more of a sentiment for the people of Karnataka because it is the new year and it is one of the biggest festivals, one of the first festivals also of the year after Sankranti, which is why, you know, there is still some amount of leeway being given to these vendors. Why we say this is because if I can, you know, actually show you on this side, you're seeing how flower vendors and fruit sellers are still being allowed to operate, but, you know, at a very minimal uh, level. In fact, a little while earlier, we also saw the police themselves coming and requesting these vendors to clear their shop out but these vendors are in the hope that you know even one more buyer for them would mean one more uh, sale now remember that for these people at Gandhi Bazaar this is their livelihood this is their only source of income and at a time like this uh, during you know of course uh, uh, the peak of the festival season over here in Karnataka uh, them having to shut their shop would really mean huge losses now uh, we did speak to a few vendors earlier and they said that ideally a single day sale ahead of Yogadi would for them mean at least about 45,000 to 50,000 rupees if nothing else but today many of them are even struggling to you know have sales worth 500 rupees. Now the reason of course there are two things to this one being the section 144 imposed across Bengaluru our people aren't really being allowed to come out and the second and also of course most importantly being that uh, the police too is ensuring strict vigil over here that you know none of these vendors are actually allowed to operate over here for long. They're also urging people only and only to come out if absolutely necessary. 
Now, it's understandable that yes, while flowers do not really fall under the essential category of goods, it is an emotional connect over here for the people of Bengaluru. They are going to continue to go ahead and, uh, you know, celebrate the festival. In fact, as you can see, in many um, uh, shops, you know, like this, uh, they're also trying to, you know, sell their uh, sell their uh, produce or sell their uh, fruits undercover. So it is, of course, you know, a very, um, uh, it is a pall of gloom has set over this entire market, if we can call it that. And it will be a rather somber Yuga but people are still urged, requested not to come out to celebrate Yugadi at a household level inside their homes. Sanjuna. Right, Neha, I, I can see, you know, uh, it's it's otherwise quite disheartening, disheartening to see, you know, this, this wearing uh, a lone and deserted look, but obviously it is the need of the hour. And we're also glad uh, to say that people are actually staying home. But Neha, on the contrary... We're also seeing cases of people violating the social distancing because uh, we're seeing a lot of people across states really not really adhering or taking the social distancing very seriously. Well, that's absolutely right, Sanjana. While we showed you, you know, a deserted market, if we bring you to the roads, uh, it does seem rather deserted when compared to, you know, a, a normal day in Bengaluru. But having said that, uh, in terms of social distancing, people are not following it. Even for the people coming out to buy, you know, be it the veggies, the fruits, the flowers, they're coming out as an entire family. They're coming out in threes and fours instead of ones and twos. So as far as the social distancing part of it is concerned, the police have, in fact, you know, tried and forcing from the morning. We've been seeing them on their toes, lati charging people back home, requesting them not to come out. But uh, having said that, it is ultimately the onus of the people. The police has done their bit. The government of Kanaka has, you know, trying to do their bit. They've imposed Section 144. Now the onus of, you know, ensuring that the virus is curtailed truly lies with the people of the state. We'll have to wait and see how this progress is going forward. Keeping in mind the fact also not to, of course, uh, you know, uh, create panic, but just to caution uh, our viewers that, yes, a number of cases in Kanatka are steadily going up. Right, Neha, thank you so much for bringing us those updates and please stay safe as we can see uh, social distancing needs to be taken seriously at this point of time. Right, some breaking news coming in. Coronavirus positive cases in India have climbed to 519, which essentially means now that 48 new cases were reported today in India. This is the latest that we're getting you right now. Coronavirus cases in India have now climbed to 519. And now let's quickly shift focus to what's happening in Uttar Pradesh where 17 districts are under complete lockdown. In fact, my colleague Ahmed Haq even went on ground, he did a check at one of the busiest intersections in Lucknow, uh, which is otherwise, you know, buzzing with activity on a usual day. But like he reported, police personnel are checking, they're personally speaking to the individuals uh, that are out on the roads. And however, most citizens are actually cooperating with the curbs in place. Perhaps maybe because of these 17 districts that are currently under complete lockdown. Let's take a look at that report. I'm at the 1090 Chalk, uh, one of the most uh, busy intersections in Lucknow. Uh, but right now, uh, the police has uh, barricaded on both sides of uh, this uh, very busy, usually very busy interse intersection. And very few vehicles are being allowed to pass through. Uh, the policemen are uh, individually speaking to each of those commuters, uh, whether on two-wheelers or on four-wheelers. They are speaking to them. Uh, and if at all, uh, they can prove that they have a genuine reason to venture outside only then they are uh, allowed to pass through these uh, uh, barricades. Uh, well, the lockdown has been in force for the last uh, uh, three days. In fact, this is the third day when uh, uh, the uh, government mandated lockdown has been put into place. But uh, as the time is passing through, the police, the administration and the local people are also taking it much more seriously than what they were doing it uh, doing over the last 72 or uh, 48 hours. Uh, although essential services are being allowed to continue, uh, the supply of uh, vegetables, milk, uh, 
uh, daily uh, items of uh, essential use they are all being allowed uh, through uh, the ambulances are applying uh, the uh, you know doctors uh, uh, police personnel sanitization uh, uh, you know people they are all being allowed through uh, but yes common people are the movement of common people is being restricted the police is looking for genuine reasons if at all somebody has to reach a pathology or a hospital he definitely will have to produce uh, papers to show that uh, they have a relevant uh, reason uh, to reach that particular facility so uh, this is being uh, you know followed by the book at least here in state capital lucknow uh, altogether 17 districts uh, in uttar pradesh have been put under complete lockdown uh, till yesterday the day uh, evening it was uh, 16 districts but after a covid 19 positive patient has been discovered in jaunpur jaunpur has also been added uh, to this list now uh, you know out of the 75 districts in up it is just 17 districts as of now but government sources are also telling us that uh, many more districts can actually be put under complete lockdown uh, over the next few days uh, because a large number of people especially uh, you know workers have traveled in uh, from states like maharashtra and gujarat uh, over the last 2 3 days and uh, perhaps uh, many of such people could actually turn out to be positive and therefore they will need to be put under isolation and also medical uh, uh, treatment will need to be extended to them so the government conscious about about the need uh, for a complete lockdown in all such places where uh, uh, you know uh, positive patients might uh, actually venture or where uh, there is uh, uh, you know continuing danger of uh, the infection spreading further and therefore uh, uh, this uh, lockdown is being taken now very very seriously by the police the administration as well as the local people now report a look at this report now filed by my colleague pradeep datta from the arispura sector in jammu where the police now have taken it upon themselves to launch a rather unique program that they are calling ghar delivery or home delivery where the police are actually delivering essential commodities to the locals to the residents let's take a look at this report when it comes to leading from front no one can match jammu and kashmir police whether it's counter terrorism operation or dealing with any kind of adverse situation jammu and kashmir police personnel are always with common masses right now i am in a different kind of a control room this control room is not to deal with any law and order situation but this control room is here where they have made a network of buyers and sellers where they are trying to in fact ensure that basic amenities are to be provided to the people here in arispura sector bhi bilkul insulin कितनी चाहिए सर इंसुलिन इंसुलिन और सॉफ्टल फोर्टी बी पी सर दो पैक जाके जी सर जी जी सर हो जाएगा सर सर हमारी तरफ से कुछ गाइडलाइंस है आपके लिए जी सर जे एंड के पुलिस की तरफ से कृपया करके आप घर से बाहर ना निकलिए और अगर किसी इंपॉर्टेंट काम से आपको निकलना भी है तो मास्क पहन के निकलिए वन दे आर टेकिंग ऑर्डर फ्रॉम द कंज्यूमर्स this person called them he wanted some kind of a medicine now he will get in touch with the medical shop in that particular area so that within 15 minutes or 20 minutes they can get those basic essential commodities idea behind this in fact home delivery system that has been created by jammu and kashmir police is that they want to have very little footfall of the people or congestion of people on streets Uh, the basic idea of this ghar delivery system was uh, we basically in, want to intimate them that you please stay back at the home and we'll be coming to you uh, for delivering of the essential commodities because if you are coming out of the home you are going to touch different persons in the market and by that way corona will increase so to control this manans of the corona we wanted them to stay back at the home and uh, let we come to their home And now let's quickly shift focus to what's happening in Mumbai. Let me go across to my colleague Disha Shah, who is joining me from the Oberoi Mall in the Goregaon area of Mumbai. Disha, you've been bringing us different reports from all over the city. Uh, you know, talking about how some markets are wearing a lone and deserted look, while some places are crowded. People are clearly violating the norms. Take us through what's happening. You know, outside Oberoi Mall, which is otherwise buzzing with activity, considering at six o'clock in the evening. 
Uh, certainly for every Mumbai car, one would know this particular junction here in the city of Mumbai, Oberoi Mall Junction. It's a weekday and this is one of the prime location here that we are talking about, which is closer to the film mm -hmm. city, which is closer to the other part of Mumbai as well. And as of now, you can see it is kind of having a deserted look at this point in time with very few uh, vehicles on the road uh, which otherwise keeps on buzzing there is a lot of traffic here specifically but right now you can see that uh, is not happening anymore only uh, two to three private vehicles we are seeing that are applying on the roads two to three uh, two wheelers as well we are seeing a lot of BESG buses because that of course has to be operational and functional for for people to uh, for of course to take people who are working at the essential services sector but as of now you can see this entire lane of the road is so short so desert this uh, this is something that the Mumbai car wouldn't have really thought about uh, Sanjana at this point in time you can see the BEST buses flying but despite that this entire lane of the street looks pretty much empty. Right, Disha, thank you so much for bringing us those updates and it's heartening really to see that people are actually following uh, the social distancing, uh, you know, streets and markets with, uh, which are otherwise very, very busy uh, now that they're wearing a lone and deserted look. Uh, although it is upsetting to see considering like we talked about how it's a festive time in Karnataka, it is the need of the hour. Uh, this is something that we've been saying to all our viewers as well. Mirror now is appealing to you to please stay home, take care of your health, stay healthy. We're anchoring out of our homes as well. We're trying to bring you the new news uh, out of our homes as well. So I appeal to you to please go ahead and do the same. Your safety, your health is of utmost importance. So no preventive measure is, uh, you know, an overreaction per se. We're also seeing Bollywood do their bit when it comes to spreading awareness. Let's take you through some of uh, these excerpts of these videos that they posted on social media. First, and of course, one that's trending right now is the one of Katrina Kef uh, offering what she calls is a professional tutorial of doing the dishes. Let's take a look. So since the house help are also practicing self-isolation, um, me and Izzy have decided to take turns to do the washing up. So I thought I'd do a little refresher tutorial for those of us who may have forgotten a bit. So first I was deciding, should I like lather each bowl, rinse it and put it in the rack? But then I decided there's a better way to do it. Just fill up the sink, put all the dishes inside, okay? Then turn off the water so you don't waste water also. Then lather all of them and then put them back here and then rinse them off. Now my colleague uh, Herman also spoke with Dr. Gaurav Chaturvedi uh, and this is particularly important, this interaction and I would like to play it out for all our viewers because from the very start, Mirror now has been constantly talking about dispelling and debunking myths and misinformation when it comes to the coronavirus. So let's play that out for you. Joining me right now is Dr. Gaurav Chaturvedi, who is in fact the director of the ENT department at Jaslok Hospital to discuss with us about the top myths related to COVID-19. Doctor, thank you very much for joining us. Um, before we could start this interview, we did discuss the top myths that had come forward. One of the top myths is that a lot of youngsters, the youth particularly, believe that because of a stronger immunity system, they are sort of, you know, immune to COVID-19, so as to say. Uh, what would you say about this particular myth, the first myth that we're talking about? Yeah, so... Uh uh, many uh, youngsters and mm -hmm. I have seen in uh, many news channels also that many youngsters from Gujarat and all they came to Mumbai mm -hmm. saying uh, uh, we are youngsters we are in the age group of 19 to 20 and uh, COVID-19 uh, virus won't affect us mm -hmm. but that's a total myth uh, the virus doesn't differentiate between the young or the adult mm -hmm. uh, definitely uh, uh, they might not uh, the virus might not cause uh, grave uh, symptoms to the youngsters mm. which in some reports they have depending upon uh, uh, depending upon the situation that they are in mm. uh, but they will become carriers for the virus and that's more dangerous because they will be more they will be a potential danger to the other population the second myth that we are seeing is a lot of people hoarding up, you know, coming at um, pharmacies and they've been hoarding on, on things like chawanprash and etc. Thinking that's going to instantly build their immune system, saying that, okay, if we eat certain foods, and these are some of the forwards also going in. Uh, so what would you comment about this? Uh, 
so this is again a myth that any food that they're going to eat they will build the immunities the immunity you cannot build an immunity in just one day or few days or just a week so it's a it's your lifestyle mm. so no matter what you are eating whether you are eating chavan prash or you are eating honey or you are taking some multivitamins it's not going to protect you from uh, the covid 19 virus now the best immunity is sleep less stress no panic and if you are having a good sleep of eight to nine hours, that is more sufficient for immunity measures rather than just going out, exposing yourself to the virus, thinking that your immunity is very strong. I may slip into a short break right now, but stay tuned. More news and updates on the other side. Welcome back. Let's quit. Quickly cut across now to the Prime Minister who is interacting with health workers. Right now, this is uh, the Prime Minister interacting with health workers. This is after we've seen the Prime Minister uh, holding interaction with uh, different sections. First, of course, it was uh, with the media. And after that, it was also with India Inc. This is all amid rising concerns around the coronavirus outbreak in India. Uh, the Prime Minister will also be addressing the nation for a second time at 8 p.m. this evening. Now, let's remember he's expected to talk about the vital aspects relating to the menace of COVID. Right, let me quickly go across to my colleague Aarti Subramaniam now who's joining me on the phone line with more. Aarti, uh, this is particularly significant, let's see, because the, as we see the Prime Minister every day interacting with a different section. Yesterday it was India Inc. Today it is with health workers. Understandably, um, you know, they need the motivation at this point of time, given how tirelessly they have been working. Anjana, this meeting could not have come at a better time, especially when you have resident doctors of AIMS complaining that they are being forcibly evicted from their houses, that their societies are discriminating them, are ostracizing them. So the Prime Minister, just the visuals of the Prime Minister interacting via video conferencing with various healthcare officials will certainly be a boost to their morale. And it's also something that people need to learn because, as you were just saying, these people are working tirelessly for us day in and day out, putting their own lives at risk, and doctors surely will need the motivation. But yes, the Prime Minister taking stock of uh, India's battle against coronavirus. Remember, he is going to be addressing the nation at 8 p.m. And just ahead of that, speaking to healthcare officers, people, speaking to healthcare officials across the country to try and gauge some tips from them, perhaps to try and gauge their difficulties. Um, also, as you were saying, that the Prime Minister's meeting is a series of meetings that he's been having via video conferencing. He was meeting leaders of India Inc. to get their feedback on how the economy can be restarted in light of coronavirus and the impact that it has had. Speaking also to officials of the media on the role that the media can play to send out a positive message and now it's part of the series of meetings, meeting healthcare officials via video conferencing. Right, Aarti, thank you so much uh, for that. Uh, these visuals that we can see on our screens of the Prime Minister interacting with uh, healthcare workers. Right, and we have... Uh, More breaking news coming in after AIMS doctors, remember, wrote to the government seeking transport, help and security. Home Minister Amit Shah has intervened. If you remember, the doctors had claimed the medical community members are being threatened, they're being ostracized and even thrown out by their landlords out of their rented homes because of the fear of corona infections. Now the Home Ministry has told the police to act against such landlords. This is the latest that's coming in. We also saw Delhi Chief Minister Arvin Kejriwal uh, appeal to the people of Delhi to embrace these people. This is coming after doctors, in fact, wrote this letter. Earlier, we even saw an airline staffer take to social media to narrate her ordeal of how she was being ostracized, ostracized in the community because of this. More breaking news coming in, the Pune district collector has instructed all petrol diesel pumps of the district to stop providing petrol and diesel to the vehicles in the district 
only those involved in an emergency and essential services should be allowed to fill fuel at the petrol pump. This is the latest that's coming in. Let's remember Pune uh, in particular, the, the measures have been rather stringent, but now the district collector coming down even harder and saying that all petrol and diesel pumps in the district will stop providing petrol to the vehicles in this district and it is only meant for people in the essential services. And we've been bringing you news of uh, a mostly complete lockdown in over 30 states and union territories. Um, and this is particularly important given the coronavirus outbreak. As you can see, I'm anchoring out of my home. Mira now is bringing uh, the news to you out of my home. Uh, but at this point of time, I would also like to appeal to our viewers to stay home, to stay healthy. Your health comes first. And please maintain social distancing. This is the need of the hour. Now, we also know that that positive cases have gone up today as of now the positive cases in the country currently stand at 519 the prime minister will also be addressing the nation as i said earlier he's currently interacting with healthcare workers he will be addressing the nation at 8 p.m this evening uh, he'll be talking about the vital aspects of coronavirus so do tune in and listen into that there might be some important information um, that actually he's sending out we also had the health ministry briefing just moments ago talking about the private labs um, that you know they're roping in for testing meanwhile we're also doing a status check with all our reporters in states across uh, across the country to see if people are actually adhering to social distancing whether they're paying attention um, to you know wash their hands and take all these kinds of preventive measures so let me quickly go across to my colleague Pramod Madhav now who's joining me from Chennai from Marina Beach which is otherwise a tourist spot it's a hub it's always crowded particularly in the evenings Pramod take us through what's happening on ground are people paying attention or are they violating all the norms Well, we have much more interesting news right now after like even like you know it's been almost two days since the central government has recommended for the lockdown of Chennai, Erode and Kanchipuram due to the coronavirus spread. After uh, like you know right now by 6 p.m. Uh, in, uh, in the entire state of Tamil Nadu, uh, section 144 has been imposed. This is a junction, a very important junction called Tenampet in Chennai and we are at that location currently and you could still see traffic is moving. People are trying to uh, like you know rush back to their homes as soon as possible. There are no buses. Uh, and like you know, no pri like commercial vehicles are allowed. It seems like they are getting an almost one hour grace period by which they have to finish all their work. And that's what you could see at this present location. 6 p.m. today, the uh, uh, section 144 has been imposed in Tamil Nadu, entire state of Tamil Nadu. And it will be on until 6 a.m. of 1st April. That's the news from Chennai right now. And uh, not just that, it's been said that like uh, if you could jog the uh, like you know the jog our memories it's been like the last time such an, an entire state uh, like Tamil Nadu entirely so section 144 was imposed was back in 1965 apparently during the anti-imposition war after that only now it's occurring here right from all the as we can see on our screens uh, it, it now appears that business as usual uh, in Chennai, which is also disheartening considering at this point of time the situation is pretty grave and uh, considering that most of the states in the country are on a complete lockdown, uh, we're seeing cars are still out, people are still out on the streets. So really, the, the norm of social distancing not particularly being followed in Chennai. Meanwhile, let's take a look at what's happening in the national capital where my colleague Mohit filed this report some hours ago where he basically went from Barakamba Road in the national capital to Connaught Place. Again, um, both of these places usually buzzing, a lot of traffic, a lot of people, but now wearing a lone and deserted look. Let's take a look at that report. We are right now at Barakamba Road and we will be moving towards the Connaught Place to see that if people are violating the section 144 and lockdown and what action police is taking. Right now we are at Barakamba Road. You can see these are the corporate offices of various companies but as of now it wears a complete deserted look and uh, we know for a fact that how yesterday when the lockdown was uh, uh, announced by the, by, by the government there were many violators who came out who were on the road without any reason and the government have clearly said to all the people in Delhi that if needed if they have to buy the items of daily needs like breads
food items and milk products then only they should venture out otherwise they should be inside their homes now this lockdown is enforced because we know for a fact that how various cases of coronavirus are coming up in the country and the government is taking this as a precautionary measure in various parts of the country lockdown has been enforced till 31st of march you can see uh, if i uh, if i ask my camera person to just show you around all the offices over here are closed uh, there is a few traf uh, traffic on the road but the government said that only uh, the people who are engaged in essential services should venture out and hence we see that today after delhi police is strictly uh, chalaning and stopping the violators uh, the the traffic is less on the road but we still see few people are out on the road and this has to stop dtc buses are planning to 25% of their capacity now we have come to skunot place and uh, you can see uh, on my right side it's skunot place uh, which is also completely closed till 31st of march the traders association have said that uh, the skunot uh, place will remain closed till 31st of march given the fact that how corona virus is spreading its wing in india the government has said that there is no need to panic you just need to stay at your homes uh, the items of daily need like food grains milk products and other items are available in the market they have stock of it so nobody needs to panic nobody needs to indulge in panic buying but yes if you talk about roads it's very less traffic on the road we can still see few motorbikes over here the petrol pumps are still open but yes market is completely closed yesterday prime minister narendra modi also appealed to the people of the country that they need to strictly follow the lockdown and he also urged the state government to enforce the lockdown so we see there is a very few traffic on the road on a normal day if you come to cp you will find all these shops open people came come here in the in, in thousands of number but as of now this area uh, wears a deserted look so this is what we need we don't need markets people uh, markets to open people out on the ground we need to stay inside and we need to take care and also you see uh, as of now we have reached the raji near the rajiv chowk metro station and the metro stations have also been closed on my left is the janpat market and it is also being completely closed uh, by the administration so as of now the administration the market associations are doing their bit and now uh, we have to wait and watch what exactly uh, uh, the, the chalans and uh, uh, will, will will police be doing because we know for a fact that how many people are still venturing out let me quickly go across to my colleague mayuresh who is joining me from outside the cst station in mumbai again uh, you know which actually used to be really a meeting point for a lot of people mayuresh uh, uh, also one of the iconic places in mumbai take us through whether people are still around what and are you seeing any kind of activity on ground or are people actually adhering to social distancing at least at this point people are adhering to the social uh, distancing you can see that uh, in front of you that's the cst main station building and you have here a bmc uh, headquarters and hardly any vehicle movement you can see uh, sanjana let me tell you that uh, mumbai police have uh, officially confirmed it that they have a registered case against 112 people for violating a, a 144 crpc which has been imposed in a state uh, <coughs> imposed in a state and uh, mumbai police Uh, have registered these complaints in mumbai suburban area and mumbai city so certainly mumbai police is taking strict action against people who are coming out of uh, out on the road or violating uh, uh, 144 crpc right now udhav thakre also again spoke uh, uh, in that uh, facebook interaction and he clearly said that people should come out only to purchase the uh, essential groceries or is or we can say the essential commodities but they should not venture out because this is not a holiday we are we have put this restrictions we have put this lockdown specifically specifically keeping the people in the mind and the, this entire pandemic in the mind that's why this is not a holiday so again he has requested people to stay at home and help the government help the uh, mumbai police help the maharashtra police to keep everything intact back to you right mayuresh thank you so much for bringing us those updates as we can see on our screens uh, thankfully the cst station which is otherwise buzzing with activity now uh, appears to be calm deserted because people are adhering to the social distancing norms Right some breaking news coming in the Tokyo Olympics have been postponed till 2021 the Olympic flame however will stay in Japan and the games will keep the name Olympic and Paralympic Games Tokyo 2020 
Uh, this obviously in the present circumstances and based on the information provided by the WHO, uh, the IOC president and the Prime Minister of Japan uh, concluded that the Games must be rescheduled to a date beyond 2020 but not later than the summer of 2021. Right now, there was a hectic back and forth about whether the Games would be postponed or not. But now, we're getting information that the Olympics will in fact be postponed and rescheduled to a date beyond 2020, but not later than summer 2021. Meanwhile, the Finance Minister also briefed the media and uh, uh, addressed the media earlier today in the afternoon, where she made... Uh, the announcement of several measures to ease the regulatory and compliance burden on taxpayers. For one, uh, keeping in mind the lockdown in, in the country, she extended the deadline uh, for filing the tax returns and also relating to the filing of GST as well. Cash withdrawals, meanwhile, from all ATMs will be free of charge and the minimum balance requirement has also been removed. Last date for filing March April and May 2020 returns. March, April and May 2020 GST returns and also composition returns all are being extended to 30th June 2020. The last date for income tax returns for the financial year 1819 will be now extended to 30th June 2020, 30 June. Customs clearance at least till 30th June 2020 will operate 24 by 7. Customs will be doing its duty as an essential service even during this period up to 30 June 2020, 24 by 7. Let me quickly go across to my colleague Avni Raja, uh, who's also joining me uh, from, from her home. Avni, this is something that we have been appealing to all our viewers as well, is to please stay home and uh, try and work out of home and do everything out of home, uh, considering uh, the, the pandemic uh, and the coronavirus outbreak. But Avni, the finance minister today announcing several measures, as we have been saying, to ease the regulatory and compliance burden on taxpayers. A, take us through some of them and also about the probable financial package that that the minister also spoke of. Well, uh, that's right, Sanjana. So the finance minister, in fact, uh, has, and at the outset, let me say that this is not the only set of announcements that's going to come from the finance minister. Uh, this is just the initial set of measures that have been put in place to sort of ease the, uh, the, the regulatory burden, the tax compliance burden on people uh, at this point in time in wake of the lockdown. Because remember, we are in March, the end of the year, when all of that is, in fact, uh, all these deadlines start approaching, March 31st usually being uh, that deadline for all of this. Uh, so several aspects, whether it's your income tax returns, whether it's uh, GST returns, uh, all of that, the deadline for which is March 31st, has been postponed uh, to the 30th of June. So that's one part. The other part is the linking of the Aadhaar and the PAN card. That deadline was also 31st of March. That has been pushed forward uh, to June 30th as well. So all of these measures have been put in place to sort of ease uh, the, finance, the, the tax compliance burden and the regulatory burden as well. Meanwhile, some of the other measures here that have been put in place is that uh, the finance minister has made it free for cash withdrawal from ATMs. So whichever uh, you know bank you may have a, an account in, you can withdraw from any ATM and you will not be charged any fees. This is sort of to ensure that people don't need to venture out uh, too far when they need to actually withdraw money. They can just step out in the first ATM you see close to your house. You can go there and withdraw money. The other part is there is no minimum balance requirement for accounts as well. Uh, that is the other big announcement that has come in. Uh, now, the finance minister also uh, made it easier for uh, MSME sector to sort of ensure that they don't face the brunt of, uh, you know, this lockdown and uh, they have some ease in compliance as well. Uh, so a whole host of these measures have been announced. Meanwhile, she also made it very clear that as far as the economic situation is concerned, it is being monitored very closely. Uh, the finance, uh, the prime minister himself is also monitoring the situation uh, as well as the fact that there is also an economic package 
uh, that is in the works right now that is going to be announced soon and that package uh, will possibly address other segments other se uh, segments of society which are uh, sort of going to be bearing the brunt of this lockdown for example the daily wages those who earn on a day to day basis are the ones who are going to be extremely badly impacted so we can expect something on that front uh, as well in that economic package a task force has also been formed a multi layer task force is uh, what she's calling it and all inputs are being analyzed and based on all of these inputs uh, this economic package will be announced so uh, while this is the first set of measures that has been announced there is more that is on the way as well sanjana right abhi thank you so much uh, for bringing us uh, those updates and really breaking it down for us and uh, you know obviously the finance minister's announcements also putting at ease a lot of concerns that several taxpayers may actually have uh, but uh, these are the biggest announcements abhi thank you so much for that